This is Twit. Um, let's talk a little bit about Vitals because that's kind of yeah. the perfect segue into that. Steph, you you kind of led the kind of insight, the introduction of Vitals on stage. Explain a little bit about what's like what exactly is happening under the hood to address battery security, startup time, stability, all these like core components to a device that I think you know for a long time people have have targeted those as you know maybe faults of their their sure. phone that they want to address. It sounds like now you're addressing it. What kind of changes are happening under the hood to do that? Oh, we could talk for a while. Do you want the <laughs> short answer or the long answer? <laughs> uh, we'll start with the short. We'll see if we can expand it from there. Uh, so uh, we really uh, focused on three core things. Uh, the first was the security of the phone. We talked yeah. about Google Play Protect, which is uh, to a uh, large extent exposing many of the things that we were doing already. In particular, the fact that we're scanning every app on every connected device. Uh, to look for harmful apps and then remove them. Uh, we talked. So we, we talked about uh, Play Protect. The uh, the second change is a set of OS optimizations that are fairly comprehensive. Uh, boot time is one of the uh, big ones that we talked about, and you'll see that right away when you start. I've noticed that already. Right. Absolutely, yeah, it's a huge yeah. time saver. Uh, the other ones, though, we made uh, optimizations in the runtime and in the compilers. The uh, the biggest changes you'll see are that apps will just run faster and more smoothly, and that's because of a whole phalanx of changes we made. Like, I think I talked about things like concurrent compacting garbage collection, which mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. um, uh, a bit nerdy to say on stage, but those, uh, all those changes in depth really just mean the apps that you have are automatically going to run much faster mm -hmm. and with smoother UI. The, like the garbage collection, for instance, it no longer happens at a, like, a set point in time, but it's uh, kind consistent. Of yeah. Uh, and then the third thing that we ta talked about in the OS optimizations was uh, background limits. And this is one of the ones that I'm, I'm personally uh, very excited about because Absolutely. it has the biggest potential long term to give you back battery life. We found that apps were running in the background and consuming uh, resources. So uh, they go rogue. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's kind of yeah. How, how I yeah. Feel about it. And so these are going to spread across, you know, when I'm using a third party phone with maybe right. a different interface. So that's still going to be built into. Uh, any phone running Android O will have those background limits uh, built in. And then we also have built a whole set of tools for developers. And we find that developers, for the most part, really want their apps to run well. So oh, it's absolutely. Super Do developers have to uh, modify their existing apps in order to be compliant with some of these new limits in like background processes, for example? Or Android O is just going to be smart enough to realize, hey, this app does not need this going on in the background. Because, I mean, sometimes you want apps to have that access in order to be functional and you know useful in in their own way. How is that determined? Um, it's it's possible. Uh, uh, many apps are already like very much in line with Android best practices and and uh, may not have changes. For others, if they're uh, running in the background, for instance, uh, background execution, uh, they are going to need to look at using Task Scheduler as an alternative, mm -hmm. and uh, that should uh, <coughs> result in much better performance for the operating system. The app should still be able to do everything they need to do. We have a standard pattern to this, which is um, you, when you write an app, you put a target API version on it. Right. And, and so if you change the API target to O, which is API number 26, uh, then these new behaviors kick in. So, mm -hmm. so what the, the end result is if you're a user and you install an app that hasn't yet updated O, it will just behave the right way. But then if you're an app developer and you're, you're updating your app for O, that's the point in time when you make all these changes. Um, and, so we, and, and the other thing that, that um, that's cool that we're doing as well at the same time as all this is in uh, the Play console, there's a set of uh, metrics that yeah, we'll, right. be, we'll be reporting to developers to help them understand you know, how their app is doing. Because I think as Steph pointed out, um, and she, she spends a tremendous amount of time with developers, like people want to make their apps better. Mm -hmm. So I think the tooling from Google um, to help you understand where yeah. you could do a little bit better, um, we've already seen people react really well to that. Now I'm not a I'm, I'm not a developer. Blow, well, you're not a developer. Um, what kind of what kind of I don't know feedback have developers had up until now for things like that? Because I mean, when I saw that on stage, I was like, I guess in my in my head, I was like, well, of course developers would want would would want slash know that, but have they known? That kind of granular detail up until now? They haven't. Is one of the our favorite things to do is to meet with developers, and we do it on a very regular basis. And so one of the things we often will uh, ask with our insider group is to have them stack rank the set of things that they'd most like to see from us. And we take that. It's a wonderful input. Yeah. In, the, um, in this past year, one of the things that rose up as one of the top requests was better help uh, with system health, with device health. And developers specifically said, you know, look, we really want to build performant apps, but we're struggling because we don't have a sense of what 
are the best practices? Like, what are we doing wrong? Mm -hmm. And we also need tooling. And so Samir is exactly right. That's um, uh, and Dave too. That's that's why we've built these dashboards, which pinpoint yeah. issues in the app. And then also profilers are really wonderful because then you can look inside the app and find out what's going on. So those were both top developer asks. Uh, good. Sure. But the point is that the user doesn't have to worry about any of that stuff, yeah, right. right? I mean, right. that's, I just install the app yeah. and I'm not going to have to worry about it running rampant. Well, one of the dashboards uh, measures something we call jank. Jank is, mm -hmm. so you want you want your UI to be smooth, it says 60 frames per second, so literally the screen's up to, it, updating 60 times a second. Jank as a word, it's, yeah. it's one of those words that it the is. moment you hear it, it's pretty self-descriptive. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? You're like, well, I know jank, but I see it. And it has it. a lot of drivers who be janky, and yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. jankiness, <laughs> yeah. but they, they needed a metric, the team needed a metric for jank. And so that for extreme jank, and they came up with one. They call it. It's called a Davy, and I think it's my biggest contribution down there today. Uh, I'm, very, I'm, very happy proud, I'm very proud of the yeah, Davy is extreme jank, uh, or Davies, right? I think it is. But, they but, are Davies. But do we, is there a numerical value? Like this is totally like a million. It's, it's, a, it's a dimensionalist unit. Okay, all right. For, uh, <laughs> it's a cat. Yeah. Uh, did we put it on the dashboard? No. Uh, we are. I, I am planning to put it on the dashboard. Are we going to actually say yeah. Davy? Well, they, I, I was, my mom's. Oh, it's not. Should, it's not an external. Dashboard over there. Uh, yeah. Easter egg. <laughs> yeah. If you could find the Davy that's buried within. Yes. The team uh, felt very uh, strongly about naming it that. <laughs> so, so obviously the other part, the other point, kind of foundational um, concern that's being addressed here, which I mean excited me to no end when I first read it a week ago prior to IO, which I, it, it blows me away that we didn't hear about it on stage yes, uh, two days ago, but yeah. maybe you can tell us why not in a second here, uh, is Project Trouble, which yep. really seems to be the beginning of something big is in my in my opinion that's like that's where it begins and this is something that personally i wondered if android would need to be built again from the ground up in order to address concerns like this you guys are way smarter than me uh, as as far as that's concerned so obviously you're proving that that doesn't necessarily have to be the case but you guys spent a lot of time on project treble uh, yeah. as a team it sounded like uh, it, it was it was a crazy process it was a huge investment we didn't spend time at the keynote to talk about it because Kind of complicated to get to, to explain, mm -hmm. and and also it's really for device makers as opposed to developers. Got it. There's so much other stuff we wanted to talk about, um, but you know, pro so it's project travel. We call it that because it's all about the base, no trouble. Uh, oh, yeah. And so it's the base. There we go. He'll <laughs> be here um, all week. <laughs> <laughs> I did not come up with the name, uh, but there you go. Um, now, th so let's see. So, so to try to explain this, the first thing to, to understand is like how complicated it is for code that our team writes, our engineers write, to it actually arriving in the, in the consumer's hand. And the right way to think about it is like a pipeline. Um, and so we write all this code and we release it in open source. And then the silicon vendors, these are the people who build the, the, the microchips for the for the phones, the big one being the SOC is a big, big chip. Um, and so companies like Qualcomm, et cetera, MediaTek. So they take the Android code and then they do a lot of work on the code uh, to optimize it for the silicon. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the challenge today is they actually end up changing not just like low level code, but quite a lot of pieces of code because it's all intermixed. Mm -hmm. right. And then what happens is they then hand that code over to the device makers who then make more changes on top of it because they might have a specific camera part that they want to use or you know, a specific GPS chip and whatnot. And so they do a bunch of work and maybe they customize some stuff. And then it goes to carriers who test it and then it goes out to users. So it's this long pipeline. And the challenge is because the code for um, the code from the operating system, which is sort of general, and the code that's device specific, hardware specific is so intermixed, what happens is when we have a new version of Android, we changed our part of it and it no longer clicks together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so it has to be reworked by the silicon vendor and it has to be reworked by the device maker. It just takes a lot of time. It, it takes an enormous amount of effort and it costs a lot. And so we worked with the silicon partner, our silicon partners and device makers and talked to them about it. I'm like, well, what can we do to make it better? So what we do in Project Travel is we create this new, we call it a vendor interface. So it's a new interface at the bottom, think of it sort of at the bottom of Android. There's, a, there's interface at the top of Android called the developer API. It's what the develop, app developers write. This is a new interface at the bottom of Android. And everything below, like south of that interface, is the code that's specific to your device. So whatever camera part you have, whatever GPS chip you have, et cetera. Everything above it is sort of general operating system. And we, we create this vendor interface, we add all these tests. So if you're a device maker, you have to pass these tests. So that makes sure that this interface is uniform. The short story is that when the next version of Android comes along, the P version, then when you, you, as a device maker, you can take the P version and put it on top of your existing device, and it will just run immediately. 
Um, now, your device maker, you probably have some customizations you want to do, but the sure. point is you're up and running immediately. He's just working on your device. Um, and so this reduces the cost uh, and the effort of updating. And that's basically what we're trying to do here. Uh, but it was a huge amount of work. We had to change every single interface at the bottom of Android. We had to separate out all the vendor code to run in a separate process so it's, got a, it, it, so it's actually isolated. Um, and so, yeah, it was a lot of, a lot of pain and it was a little, little bit of scary moments where we're like, is this going to work? <laughs> uh, but it's all working. And actually, if you, if you use um, the Pixel uh, with the preview or the beta of, oh, that's actually fully, we call it trebleized. Okay. Uh, so it's fully using this architecture and we did that just to prove everything out on an existing device. Uh, so we're pretty excited. It's a big, big change. Probably the biggest engineering change we've made to Android since we started. It sounds like it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.